This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Uh, we, we wrote the, the first act, and 
um, and it ended with this Weisliche uh, twist, twist, this uh, this uh, marital discord, um, and um, Pericles storming out of the house without telling his um, wife what his uh, plans are. Yeah? And, um, and then, in, so in the second act, um, he so he's, he's going to Mount Etna, and he is already, he already has this idea, which is, as presently is described as a secret urge, a secret inclination to, uh, to, 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 to find loneliness on Mount Etna. And be with this, I'll, I'll put the text up in English as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Pedro wird von seinen Schülern auf dem Erdmann besucht. Zuerst von seinem Liebling, his favorite. Liebling is a little more than favorite. Der ihn wirklich bewegt und fast aus seiner Herzenseinsamkeit zurückzieht. Dann auch von den übrigen, die ihn von neuem mit Entrüstung gegen menschliche Dürftigkeit erfüllen, sodass er sie alle feierlich verabschiedet und am Ende auch noch seinen Liebling ratet ihn zu verlassen. And Pickens' pupils visit him on Etna, first of all, his favorite who truly moves him and almost draws him out of his loneliness of heart, then the others who arouse on him yet again his indignation in the face of human neediness, so that he solemnly bids them all adieu. In the end, he advises even his favorite to leave him. So, um, the way it starts is by saying the, the that which that which uh, appears as, or that, that which, from the side from the point of view of the pupils, is is a motivation out of love, not wanting the master to disappear, not wanting that, but literally not wanting the master to disappear, is um, is from the point of view of of, of the of Empedocles, who has reached a different mental state, as it were, is a human neediness. Is again this uh, this lack in, in, in humans is this one-sidedness that we spoke that we talked about in the beginning. This one-sidedness, which uh, which is precisely what it wants to get away from. Yeah? So it seems as if um, as if here the case is made only stronger. His decision or his desire to escape from all of this. Yeah? Erster Auftritt, ein Pedokress auf dem Etna, Monolog, entschiedenere Devotion, das ist ein Pedokress gegen die Natur. Gegen die Natur. Ein Pedokress, more decisive devotion to nature. 
Look at what that, what that uh, might be. And then we get the Pelicans and, the, and then his favorite. First his favorite, then his students, then his favorite comes back again. And he also urges his favorite to leave him. So this act seems to me to be to be to to to, to take place in the in the in the plan entirely within the realm of philosophy. Entirely within the realm of the the philosopher and the relation between the master and the, and the student. And this relation is not enough to keep uh, a better place in this world. But then, uh, yeah. but then we get. Uh, it's almost enough with this lead little but You're right. It's not enough. It's not enough. His lead thing moves him, but his lead thing moves him, but his, his lead thing cannot keep him. Yeah. But the lead thing will come back. Um, later on, it will be he will be the last one to visit him, and he will and, and Pericles then doesn't want him near because he feels that he will not be able to resist him. He will not be able to resist his 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 pleas or, or his the presence of, of his love, and and, will, and he thinks that that Leaping was also the only one who knows what he is really planning to do. So there is a kind of. Um, yeah, I don't know what you think about that, but there is kind of uh, movement here that we haven't seen everything the Liebling has in store yet. Which is a good word, because you're right, as well as it being favourite, it's got Liebling, it's a Lieber. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a good word. Yeah. Except, especially in the context of Empedocles. Yes, yes. This is what we're talking about yeah. the last, yeah. yeah. Because it's Lieber now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, And this Liebling, and Hölder it says, draws him out of his loneliness, so out of his solitude, almost. It seems as if it's the, the other ones. Yeah, it's the pool of the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe this is the way it is intended, that um, first, there, there is this 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 uh, relationship between him and, and his and his, his 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 dear dearest one, um, which almost gets him out of his loneliness. So the implication being also that it is his Herzen's Einsamkeit that motivates him, which of course we've seen already. He, uh, he wants to reunite with uh, with nature because he, he cannot stand the separate the separateness. But then um, the other people come, the many other people, um, and then makes him decide, no, I don't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And that's a that's a that's a weird. Well, that's a movement that we that you, we can think about. This experience of the promise of one or of a friend, the promise of friendship, that it uh, takes away loneliness, and then the confrontation with with the many, almost making making that that promise, taking taking that promise, destroying that promise, taking that promise down. You might think, what has got what have these many got to do with with the relation between between the, the between the pedophiles and his and his leaping? Yeah. As though the others might sort of reinforce his loneliness or remind him more of his loneliness, for which for which they would like to say another, but the favourite is is not enough to compensate for in the sort of trucks and things. Yeah. So it is as if this, this confrontation with many becomes a prefiguration of the, the limit of this love relationship. Yes. It is a love relationship. Or it's a reminder of the other side of it. The, the reminder of the other side of it. And so 
a reminder of the fact that it's not enough. And therefore, the deepling is also asked to, to get uh, away. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the third act. The Press wird auf dem Etna von seinem Weib und seinen Kindern besucht. Ihren zärtlichen Bitten setzt das Weib die Nachricht hinzu, dass an demselben Tage die, Ag die Agrientiner ihm eine Statue errichten. Ehre und Liebe, die einzigen Bande, die ihn ans Wirklich knüpfen, bringen ihn zurück. Seine Schüler kommen voll Freude in sein Haus, der Liebling stürzt ihm an den Hals, er sieht seine Statue errichtet, dankt öffentlich dem Volke, das ihm Beifall zuruft. That's Act 3. So here it is uh, love in a more emphatic sense and honor that bring him back. <coughs> yeah. Why would this be? Why are these things so great? if he has just experienced the ennui even of, of love. What, what is it about these things that, that, uh, that could possibly motivate, that we could think would be a motivation for? We're talking here about a moment, if I translate it already to Lao Tse a little bit, where Lao Tse, what would make Lao Tse decide to, to come back, as it were? Uh, I mean, that would be a strange idea, wouldn't it? He would say, yeah, well, but Lance's view is always, you know, there's no hard without soft, there's no difficult without easy. So it's the, again, it's the, you know, there is that, but then there's the other side. Yeah. So maybe it's that, that everything is interrelated. The, these opposites, your principle of opposition, maybe? Yeah, which you don't have in the pedigrees. He suffers from this opposition to such an extent that he wants if he wants to get rid of it. Yes. And that's the maybe the principle of persecution he has as well. Yeah, he's, that's, he's that's suffering so much that the more he makes it, the more he can't get rid of it. He's exactly. persecuted by it. Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. So I mean that that's an hypothesis. <coughs> yes, yeah, that's the yes. And Pericles versus I would say is the is the, the problem is that of how to deal with persecution, how to deal with opposition. And, and Empedocles, although he is the thinker of, of oppositions, is, in a certain reading, is portrayed here as not being able to live with it. Whereas Lao Tse is, is, is different, but yes, Lao Tse yes, exactly. does decide to, to move away. Maybe not to kill himself. Well, that's, I mean, these are difficult questions. But um, what would motivate Empedocles here? Why, or let's say, why would Hull in, in this plan, which was the first text that he wrote about it, um, why would, would this era und Liebe here uh, be introduced as the einzige, the, the only ties that, that bind, it doesn't say us in the, in, in, uh, that's interesting in the translation. It says that bind us to actuality, but it says the Enans wirkliche Knüpfen, which tie him <coughs> to reality. It's interesting the function of the statue here, because in some ways you kind of read it <coughs> cynically as um, his return to the city is precisely because the culture or the like the greatest cultural act of erecting a statue in someone's honor is directed precisely to him and that's the only reason before why he was rejecting that culture or something because he was in some sense an outsider um, I don't know cultural pass that's right cultural pass yeah cultural pass in the last time just like becoming stone, kind of all the connotations of eternal yeah. life or petrified yeah. life. And that's kind of literally become nature. To yeah. So it seems that we have here to do with an inversion almost of a, of a, of a, of a life drive and a, and a death drive. Mm -hmm. It's the life drive that 
that propels him into this act of suicide, and it's a, it's almost a death drive that, strangely enough, that, that draws him back to the to, to the city. It is the statue, but then also the love for the. For, for you don't think it could be seen as sort of weakness on his part, or sort of the amount he knows he can't trust himself because he advises, <coughs> because at the end he advises he could to leave him, but this is a sign to some extent of weakness. Yeah. And he's drawn towards it, <coughs> and he recognises these forces, although they might be, as you say, deathish like forces. He wants to, he, that's right, and right until the last moment, right he, the last moment. he would like, he, there is something in him that wants yeah, something wants to come back, but it wants to it wants to, to, to remain, to stick around. I think that ambivalence is embodied in the statue. There's a thing, right? Because it's both presence and absence. I just sort of think in Greek statuary of like even the statue addresses the viewer in the first person. You know, yeah, it's just like I am the yeah. mother of I am the daughter. Yeah, mother. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's precisely the moment where you think it's about to animate or speak to you, you realise its absence as well. Especially when that relates to the divine portrait of Saturday, it's even more acute of this absence. Yeah, present. absolutely, yeah. And the statue in one's own time is a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. As you say, yeah. it's normally put up after death. Exactly. A statue. It's kind of yeah. more it's sort of even <laughs> you're right, the eternal or divine one, especially in at those times, in those times. Yeah. But he's like, it, it's as if he's letting them appeal to his vanity. Yeah. That, that was why it was so surprising. It's yeah. like Andrew Chirp, that Andrew that he's this, this outsider <laughs> who's suddenly capitulating to this yeah. act of commemoration and yeah. eternal commemoration yes. and, and all of that. But at the same time, so I really still don't understand it <laughs> at that level. I just don't, that it seems so out of character. But, but also, as you were saying about petrification, it's it's like a sort of monumental version of the the sort of the heart and shoe he's behind. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I suppose it is era of Liba, so there's the manifestation of Liba there, which is you know a sort of life force as well. So yeah, it may not be any of these other things, but there's nothing wrong with Liba. The air, that's right, that's right. That's but, but it seems that there is a kind of contrast at, at the same time. <coughs> I agree with that. It seems, it seems that there is a kind of contrast between the, the love that is, in, that is evoked in the third act, which is the love for wife and children, yes. essentially a procreative love, yes. um, and the love for the liebling, which, especially in this Greek context, is, is, a, is, a, is a homoerotic love that is not tied to a regime of procreation, but to a pure recognition of one person and, and another person, two souls, in a way. Um, yeah. But Ella is a sort of new concept, isn't it, in, introduced, we didn't really have much about Ella before, we, so... Nothing. It's interesting it's introduced, yeah, I think. Uh, nothing, except that... Uh, um, it's actually scruples and beeping you uh, I think that's it. Yeah. His wife maybe knew him better than, than we think. Because she was already well, expecting a lot from this from this uh, this festival, yeah? Um so so in, in some sense Holden seems to be putting these two things together and he says it in a movie but which is, if you think of, of honor as a kind of love, and if you think of love as a kind of honor. Um, to what, just as a general being towards something, I don't mean. To be honor is to be loved. Honor is, is to be loved by the, the city, to be, to, be, to be loved by the city. Um, the love for in the family, in the family is, is a kind of natural love. Now you might say somebody who is suffering from a Pericles metaphysical ailment 
might just start a family, uh, to put it slight, slightly <laughs> lapidary fashion. Yeah. Because that's also like jumping into the volcano. <laughs> it's like, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? You become part of the, the, the life force. Well, he's tried that, he has children. And he has already done that. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Yeah. The children are more <laughs> So, so what, what has happened? What, what is so somehow these manifestations of the the, the metaphysical uh, opposition between agapophilia and, and, and nekos, or how is it, uh, love and hate? Uh, the, 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 that resolution of that of that problem is is not enough. The resolution of that problem in the city and the family, so in the public life and in the huh, in the in, 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 in the home, uh, is not enough. So, if you think of the, the traditional view of of, uh, of the, the, the Greek view of virtue, there is the, the, the male virtue, as Plato already describes this in uh, in the Mino. There is the the virtue. Plato doesn't agree with it, but Mina says this, but the virtue of a man is to be able to, to manage the city, and the virtue of a woman is to be able to manage the home. Uh, and that is the kind of uh, the baseline. Yeah? It seems that almost that, that he is appealing here to, to this kind of understanding of, um, of virtue and therefore of the good lives. And in that respect, we're talking here about something that, that doesn't fit that. So maybe we're talking about, certainly in terms of karma, we're talking about kulturas, uh, but in, and in terms of, 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 of the, the love for uh, wife and kinder, yeah, they, they, it runs deep because it comes back later on again, but it's also not enough. Although it is always tempting. And just stand them back here. So, but I mean, the question will only be resolved. And uh, your question is: Is this is this not out of character? What does it mean? This will probably only become a little bit clearer. The historical, you and I want people to say that the, the historical in fact is was something that did have a big role in, in this in this yes. state. Yes. Yeah. So although it's jars here because of the the comments about culture has at the very beginning. It, this clearly has been a part of his life, isn't it? It's just this moving beyond that. I mean, it, I mean with the, the airstrip has something, but there, again, there's a strong sense that he has played the civic role, but that's yeah. past. Exactly, and that's what the historical yeah. was, was uh, yeah, we, we had, he was one of the great, he was the he instituted the democracy. Yes. The so there has been important to him, and one of these words you said were very important values at the time. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And he was certainly also. A family man in, uh, in, the, in the legend uh, in which he, uh, as I said, uh, I think it's, uh, he, uh, one of his good works was, was that he had a fund, a financial fund, to provide a dowry to uh, poor families who couldn't afford one themselves, yeah, so, so that their daughters could get married. Um, okay, good. Well, many questions. Then we go to, uh, to, the, to the fourth act, and here things, things change. So, I'm neither erfahren von einigen seiner Schüler die harten Reden, die er auch in Edna vor, vor Diensten gegen das Volk ausgestoßen. Wir nützen es, um das Volk gegen ihn aufzuhetzen, das auch wirklich seine Statur umwirft und ihn aus der Stadt jagt. Nun reicht sein Entschluss, der längst schon in Dämmerte durch freiwilligen Tod sich mit der unendlichen Natur zu vereinen. Wir nehmen diesen Vorsatz den zweiten tieferen schmerzlicheren Abschied von Wald und Kindern und geht wieder auf den Ende. Seine jungen Freunde waren er aus, weil er diesem zutraut, dass er sich nicht wieder enttäuschen lassen, mit den Tröstungen, in denen er sein Weib besänftigt und dass dieser sein eigentliches Vorhaben ahnt. So we might even say at the beginning, he just he runs out of the house, he wants to be lonely. He wants to be alone on, on, on Mount Etna, and they manage to get him back. Of course, he already is playing with the idea to, to kill himself, but only now does it become uh, uh, 
and, uh, and uh, 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 a solid uh, decision. Yeah. And this, here we, we have this, this the first occurrence of this word Freiliger Tod, voluntary, how does he translate it? A voluntary death, Freitod. <coughs> Which of course has all the connotations here of, of freedom in it as well, yeah? which doesn't have so much. <coughs> yeah, and this idea of, of unification with infinite nature through suicide, is that kind of, I guess, like it goes through Schopenhauer to an extent, but was it, did it exist before that? In, or it existed before, well, in the romantic, obviously it's here. But I don't know where it comes occurs first in romanticism. I mean, the idea of suicide, of course, is a is a very romantic idea. Yeah. But the uh, unification with nature is uh, I don't I don't don't think so. I think this is where this comes up. Because yeah. even in that, the unification. Yeah. Yeah. Does the suicide go? Is it pre gacha or is it so gacha in <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was before that. Yeah. yeah. I think you get this the English the, the painting of the, uh, uh, the the famous painting of the the, the, the poet who killed himself. Chasterton. Yeah, that's that's uh, okay. yeah. It's Ch Chasterton's he was later, wasn't he? Was he later than so. yeah. I don't know. No, no, Chasterton was quite early. He was not early. Yeah, he was early. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I would say that is that, that it's, I mean, it's, it's in, in the air at this time, but, mm. but uh, yeah. But of course, um, in in the sources, the the Opus Laetius also says that uh, he has these two stories, these two accounts of why he jumped into the crater. One of them is out of a desire to reunite the nature, to become divine, he says, and the other one is that as a stunt to to acquire fame. Mm. Um, but uh, but this idea that that Abelard tried to unify to become one with the with the source of what of, of his, with, with what he felt was the source of reality is of course also an idea that was around in antiquity mm -hmm. and you see it in uh, in Plato the same way the soul the ascent of the soul that leads to unification with with the with, with the, the world of ideas with the one and the is is also a kind of as Plato says, the art of dying. Mm -hmm. Philosophy is the art of dying. Ars, ars moriendi, um, which in the Stoa, in the moral, moral philosophy of the Stoa, came to be interpreted as a kind of detachment from whatever binds you to the world, so that the difference between life and death <laughs> becomes minimal, as it were, and, uh, and once you die, you become there nothing nothing much changes. <laughs> 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 uh, but in, uh, in, in, in Plato it's something much very different. It's, it's the idea that, that we belong, not here, but there. Mm -hmm. And, and in that, in that well, what Plato treats of in a very uh, sort of contaminative fashion, mystical fashion, in, in a Pericles becomes uh, material reality, actually doing it. Um, and that seems to be also in the background constantly this question, can you really do that? What happens when you do it? Or can you at most tell the tale about it? Uh, which, which is, as you were suggesting, is, is the beginning of this, how do we interpret the sample? So there might be a resolution of the two readings that, that, mm -hmm. that, that the tradition gives. In, was, was, it, was it staged or was it real? Well, it was staged, but only because it was staged, it, it could be real, but well, it was real in a way. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. just on the sample, maybe I have invented this, but I think before this course, I've read it somewhere. There's one interpretation, is, is it an interpretation, you haven't mentioned it yet, that the volcano actually sort of spat out the sample as if it didn't want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through something, and that, that is a. Yeah, that's also what Hodel in. Hodel in the Yes, yeah. no, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
one will be that there. I think uh, I have to read it again, but I'll, I'll make it available to yourself. I think it even says that the sandal came what was blackened or was at, at the source or had that you know, it, it, it was it obviously been been in the fire. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 I mean it, it, you can uh, it, the, it's here in the yeah, yeah. that it's um, uh, Eisenman. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So presumably it's sort of covered with magma or whatever it is yeah. and hard yeah. it comes out of it and gets cold. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then you spit it out and then you yeah. But it's not a comment that nature doesn't want it or didn't didn't accept it or anything like that. It's couldn't be judged in that way. You could say that because yeah, it's, it's slightly dismissive <laughs> if you are a volcano, if you are a life force and you just someone dives in and you sort of shoot back a sand. Volcano only accepts the body. Like oh yeah, not the body. Yeah, it doesn't want to do sand. Um, yeah, a bit like those sort of uh, uh, theories of the uh, rapture. Sort of the yeah. same where you actually lose your clothes behind. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so which presumably is difficult for people with you know belts and things like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How so have these question, question, you know, these American Christian types don't, don't think of those questions. No, 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 exactly. It is actually a very convenient trip of thought of it. It's a it's a back to the patient, it's such yeah. an image. It is an, it's an endless image. You know? Yes. It never yeah. really fully, it's, and that's it. It's an image that eludes any final interpretation. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so and it's interesting. Well. Actually, uh, uh, Karen Leader, who is uh, a professor of German literature at, at Oxford, wrote a book on Brecht's poetry with the title of Pedicle Sandal. Yeah, I saw that. Maybe. Yeah. And I don't even know about it. <laughs> we must uh, we must have it. it. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we, we must consult it um, to see what, uh, what, what she makes of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is, so we need to talk about that. <coughs> okay, so, um, fifth act. And Peter has provided to the to the tour of four. He prepares for death. The accident leads to Freddy for Anlassungen. To sein and Schuster von der Bungans für ihn weg. And he betrachtet ihn as a notwendigkeit die aus seinem innersten Wesen folgen. In den kleinen Szenen, die er noch hier und da mit den Worten dagegen hat, findet er überall Bestätigung seiner Denkart, seines Entschlusses. Sein Liebling kann noch, hat das Wahre geahndet, wird aber von dem Geist und von den großen Wesen in dem Gemüte seines Meisters so sehr überwältigt, dass er den Befehle desselben blindlings gewagt und geht. <lacht> Bald darauf stürzt sich ein Pelotress in den lodernden Etna. Sein Liebling, der unruhig und bekümmert in dieser Gegend umherirrt, findet bald darauf die eisernen Schuhe des Meisters, die der Feuerauswurf aus dem Abgrund gesteuert hatte. Er kennt sie, zeigt sie der Familie des Pelotress seinen Anhängern im Volke und versammelt sich mit diesen an dem Vulkan, um Leid zu tragen und den Tod des großen Mannes zu feiern. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a resolution. There is a resolution that, that his death is celebrated. Um, but in the beginning of the of the act, you see that uh, all of this, what has come before in a way, uh, falls away as well, becomes coincidental. Yeah? Um, the accidental occasions of his resolve fall away altogether for him. So this. The fact that he uh, that he saw all these people, and the fact that they threw uh, over top, top of his statue and, 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 and uh, chased him away, now appear also as in a way not uh, not relevant anymore. They may have been uh, they may they may have led to this uh, to this event, but they are not the only reason for his decision. <coughs> Um, there, and with that, it gets a kind of notwendigkeit, a necessity, which um, I might say that would have been something else. And then we say his leaping comes back, but also recognizes that uh, he is dealing here with something that has become, of a diff that has acquired a different order than that of. Uh, other human emotions and human feelings. And then the sandal comes out.
Holloway talks about um, Bestätigung seiner Denkart, seines Entschlusses, confirmation of his way of thinking, his resolve. Um, that's interesting. The, 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 you might almost say the zufällige Veranlassung, the coincidental circumstances, accidental circumstances of what happens are of a, on the level of pathos. Mm -hmm. They have to, they have to do with with uh, emotions, feelings, moods, and the play also starts with that. With that. Uh, and Peter is also saying, "Mut und seine Philosophie schon längst die Kultur hat gespielt." But there will also have this plurality, the duality of the, of the, the mood and the philosophy. And here at the end, we get a bestätigung, confirmation of his philosophy. So what he is doing, uh, what he is doing, is a. Uh, is a the logical conclusion of his philosophy. That's quite a big statement. Huh? That means in any kind of interpretation of, of what Empedocles does in terms of depression or you know whatever makes people suicidal. So that's not not what is at play here. We're talking here about something else. Er findet Bestätigung seiner Denkart. He finds confirmation of his way of thinking. And maybe it's something, you know, the townspeople, the actions were bringing out what really said so, I mean, it's being tested and then finding rather evil. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. On which side he comes out. <laughs> Exactly. But it all goes in, in, in the same direction. The shit comes and the card. Yeah. So it is that happens, but is is uh, <coughs> this happens and, and he gives a sign. Or nature gives a sign. So indeed as, as so the, the question whether whether so the question is does the initial image is the volcano doesn't want his shoes take the the volcano will take everything but not his shoes. Um, but you could also say the volcano leaves gives a message. Yes, it's a proof, isn't it? He has done it. That's it. It is, is a simple it is it, 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 it removes any doubt as to where he is or Yeah. That is the, the exactly it's a symbol in the in the in the literal sense almost. Yeah. Mm. I mean, in the, in the very literal sense, if you take the word symbol, it's a symbolism, so it's a throwing together. Yeah. So originally, a symbol, or the word symbol, derives from the practice of, of a, 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 a token of identification, whereby, whereby you take a, a plate and you crack it into two halves. And then the cracks, of course, you can only fit it together if you have the if you have the two halves. Mm. The, these can then function as a as a system of as a, as a token of recognition, and they are called the, 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 the symbol because you have to throw the, put the two halves together to to get the whole and recognize it. So the word symbol derives from this as a mm. as a as, as, as a word that fits on the thing. So, mm. Yeah. Uh, so here we have something that is literally <laughs> thrown out, and thrown out out of the of the volcano, but it is also uh, yeah, it's also a throw. Something is something is thrown. Yeah? So maybe this idea of the throw uh, is, is something that we can, can think about. I guess it imitates the statue again. This is this kind of, it has kind of crust. It's like this solid monument to his memory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it can, that's right. It's a solid memory of, of his absence. There is, by the way, in um, in uh, the life of Brian. <laughs> if you remember this film, 
but there is this, this uh, also this moment where this fake messiah comes yeah. out, yes. and he is, he, is, he, is, uh, he leaves the sandal behind, <laughs> and then the whole the crowd starts to worship the sandal. <laughs> which is, well, this happens with which is that well, well, Buddha was you know, well, in fact all Christianity as well. Yeah, but it's sort of the same as Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, 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 but, but I mean the fact that it's, that it's a sandal. Yes, yeah, that it's a sandal. Yeah. 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 No, they're also arguing about whether they should call it a shoe or a sandal. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 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 so immediately the, the, the religious uh, strife starts. Yeah. <laughs> it's really about a which, 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 that's right, which you can also see here in, in precisely the, the duality in the, in the, in the tradition. In the, whether he did it to, to become divine or just to impress people and acquire fame, that is that is the same kind of quarrel that immediately comes up. Well, it's true. Religious figures always have sandals. You know, they're about <laughs> shoes, the religious shoes. Or <laughs> well, there is a whole book to be written about the sandal. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> actually, it must right. have been written. Um, but um, you could also talk here about the shoe as something that Empedocles does not need. In his, in his newly found uh, uh, beatified state. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you could also think about the sandal mm -hmm. as, uh, as redundant now that there is no wayfaring anymore for him. And even more than that, at least in the sketch, there's no sense of his individuality continuing, is there? It's not <coughs> different from a sense of a, of a, of a Socrates or whatever, soul being free from the body and going, yeah. presumably remaining somehow himself. But yeah. this is this is this is a, a, a unification of something bigger than himself. So yeah. therefore, the loss of his individuality. Exactly, it's a loss of it. That's right. It, that's so it's just very extreme in that sense. It is. Uh, yeah. yeah. It is maybe it's a kind of nirvana move. Yeah. He becomes one with something that is not that is uh, that lacks all individuality. It becomes devoid of itself. And so, we, yeah, that's right. And we might take the shoe, the shoe for that as well, the sandal. Oh, the sandal is, of course, a lack, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a container. Yeah. It needs a foot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, yeah. It's, it's a hole. It's a, it's, it's a lack. Especially in sandal, because it's not like the like proper shoe. <laughs> 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 I'd say, think about the uh, the centre of the spokes as the hub and the drinking vessel. Yeah. We could have the sandal to that. Exactly. The fourth, uh, there is a drinking vessel. And the room, which is itself a negative. Yeah. Well, there's a negative. Isn't it? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking yeah, about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So the symbol is itself also has this this evacuating moment. The symbol itself is always away from what it it it, it, it presences it, makes it present, but has something that's absent. Mm. Otherwise it would not be the symbol would not be needed, as it were. Yeah. Uh, so you get a lot of these things there. But we'll talk about all that in the in, 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 in future as well. Um, so this is the Frankfurt class, and then I think before we go to the to the, the text of the, of the plays, we should look at Bert Brecht and see how we can begin to see a connection between these two uh, very complex stories and themes. Um, and I want to, before we I want to read the poem and just to see what we feel about it. But I would like to point out that this, that it, although not originally, I think, but that it does occur in this book, Kanan mm -hmm. And so there is <coughs> something we have to think about when we try to understand these stories that has to do with time. And um, <coughs> the Kalender, the Kalen Geschichten are originally in German literature, but also a little bit in, in other in, in other European literatures, are um, tales that used to be published in, in almanacs. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So there, 
there has been a very popular tradition since the beginning, since the invention of the printing press, really, mm -hmm. of uh, al almanacs for for the people, for people who read and write, um, which contained useful information of things that happened during the year, such as the, the days of, of religious feasts, but also the sunrise and sunset and various seasons of the year, uh, when, when the markets were held in, in the area where you lived, etc. It was a very rich tradition of, of almanacs, um, and, and very, very early on, already in the 17th century, I mean, you can read all about this in the encyclopedias and stuff like that. Uh, there, there were several of these almanacs, especially in the German area, in the German language area being, being uh, published regularly. And they started to um, uh, include stories and uh, little, little uh, items of news, but also fictitious tales, often with very moralistic content, uh, as, a, as a way of edifying the nation you know, or edifying the readership. And they became very popular. The most popular one is, is certainly in German literature, is um, the, 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 the Rheinländische Hausfreund, the Hausfreund of Rhineland, by Johann Peter Hebel. Yeah? And Hebel published uh, this, this uh, almanac between late, late 18th century and 1815 or 1816, a period of 20 or 25 years. Abel was a, was a teacher and a minister in Karlsruhe, and he wrote it practically uh, all by himself. Came out once a year, the Rheinländische Hausfreund. It was an almanac for uh, people living along the Rhine from, let's say, Basel to, uh, to, to, to Baden, Karlsruhe, a little bit up from there. Um, and these, and these the stories that Abel wrote for his, his, his calendar for his almanac were published after he stopped publishing the almanac as the Kalendergeschichten des Rheinländischen Hausfreundes, the calendar tales of the Rheinländischen Hausfreund. Um, they became a, 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 a geheimtip in, uh, in, in, in German literature. So Benjamin loved them, Goethe loved them already before anyone, Kafka uh, loved them, and he loved him as so he said, he was the greatest. Storyteller in the town of Wien. Bloch also loved them, uh, Helen Hesse loved them. So they have a, a Wittgenstein apparently loved them. They have a, a real existence, in, a sort of subterranean existence in, in German literature. A lot of people, a lot of German people, especially older generations, know them from, from primary school, some of these tales, because they were also used in, in, in primary education. And they're all, Hegel's calendar tales are all edifying. Um, so they're moralistic, they're all tales with a, with a message at the end. But they also have a, they have something else. Heidegger has written an essay on Hegel, uh, Hegel the House Point, in which uh, he talks about Hegel's language as, like Hölderlin's language, somehow expressing being itself. Yeah? Um, because Hegel also wrote poems, and Heidegger writes mostly about the poems that Hegel wrote in the Alemannian dialect. But the same thing applies to the, to the, to the tales of the house point. Is this something that relates to this cyclical nature of the year? Yeah, so I'm coming to that. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, so <coughs> these, these calendar tales, especially in, in, in the, so the tradition of the calendar tale is one of edification. Right. Yeah. Yes. Hegel's calendar tales, which Brecht also knew, knew very well, must have known very well, um, have that, but they have something else as well. And that's what I now, for now, just want to call the voice of being. Yeah. Bloch has written an essay on Hegel, <coughs> in which he, he talks of, of Hegel's, uh, uh, the, 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 the peasant Tao of Hegel's language. Mm -hmm. So Bloch connects Taoism to the language of Hegel. And he says this is a kind of, long before Peter Sloterdijk wrote a book with that title in the 80s, this is a kind of Euro Taoism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this is Euro Taoism. It's, uh, it, it's, it's the way of being that pervades everything, which in the Rhine Dungeon House Point is also always connected with the river, with the Rhine that flows and that flows from year to year, and life goes on on the, on the banks of the Rhine. And, uh, the, the little people, the farmers, the merchants lead their lives and 
There is this kind of peaceful world which becomes a utopia of a peaceful society which, which is on the one hand modern, Hegel was a supporter of the French Revolution, of equality, then democracy, and on the other hand, uh, in which people are living in, in unity with, with the natural world around them and with this, uh, with this uh, rhythm that pervades everything. Uh, um, this, this world rhythm. And so the language acquires a curious golden shimmer of peacefulness in, in here. It's a very, very, very remarkable uh, uh, storyteller. One article that I wrote about the kind of shift is on the on the blog um, website. Um that's an illustration in Herman Dorotea, for example, that sort of um, you know the garden going back yes. despite seeing the peasant that you know people escaping from the very early reports, you yes. still had this sort of timelessness and yeah, exactly. peace and that's it. And it's taking also... pleasure in Absolutely. the harvest of the crops. Yeah. Yeah. And the Germans love it. Yes. Still. Yes. It is still, and there is this myth, this German self myth itself, mythical self understanding of we were late to adopt capitalism, industrialism, and so we still feel the connection to that old world. Yes. Yeah? And yeah. that also became one of the fertile grounds for fascism. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's, that is, that's the appeal of fascism, is that it connects a modern world with, um, with that it connects modern. Yeah efficient industrial organization technology with this whole world, with this world that is still all that everything is still within its boundaries and everything knows its place. Interestingly, we could talk, talk for hours about Hegel, but interestingly Heidegger totally ignores the enlightenment <coughs> side of, of Hegel. Hegel is an enlightenment author. Heidegger totally ignores that and only talks about the, 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 the natural side, the, 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 the primordial side. And I think that's not a coincidence, it fits very well with Heidegger's own penchant towards, towards fascism, uh, as, it, as it was very, very strong in him for many decades. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So, um, so there is a, this is a very, very difficult thing. How do we, also for ourselves, how do we relate, how, how do we relate to these feelings that we have within ourselves as well. Yeah? That for, for a world in which the antagonism of capitalist society is not there. That points backwards, but it also points forwards. It points to communism in, in, in Brecht. And we see that in, in Brecht's use of, of Lao Tse. For him, there was always, as I already said at the beginning, there was a strong connection between communism as the simple thing that is so difficult to do and um, the message of Taoism. Right? So I mean, I, I, everybody who has grown up in China will we'll know that this is more complex than Brecht <laughs> uh, thought, and we all know that. Yeah. But um, there is something that goes back to something that, that points ahead in this, in this, uh, in this feeling that, that I think we can all share. Yeah? Um, and that somehow comes also comes to the fore in the poem comes to the fore in the, in, in the story of Vedic as well, because it deals with the same problem, how do we relate to, to nature, and how do we relate to, how does individuality relate to, uh, to commonality, to, to, to the whole, as it were. Yeah? Um, so, we can, have, we can make a lot of the calendar. Right. Yeah, that's what we will get to. <coughs> It is not just, um, so Benjamin has helped us here by um, making a, in, in his interpretation of one of Hegel's stories, which is the story Unverhofftes Wiedersehen, uh, Unexpected Reunion in the English translation, which is about the, which is about the Bergwerk von Fadum. The minds, the minds at Fadun, about which Robert Hoffman Stahl also wrote a story. Um, Benjamin interprets the story and says there are two kinds of time. There's a big difference between the time of the clock and the time of the calendar. The time of the clock is a recurrent time. So it's, it's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and it's 12 o'clock again, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock again. Yeah? It's a cyclical time. But it's also a time that, in a way, just measures measures 
distance to some previous time point, and then it's a, it's, it, it's 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 a measure of successive time. Whereas um, precisely the kind of time that Ampere class cannot stand, and for which he wants to go into the Freitod, the freely chosen death. The calendar time is a different time. The calendar time always starts by reference to a special day. And, that's, and from that special day onwards, we count the days. So, although our annual calendar returns, we are living in the year of our Lord, 2014. Yeah? And also the Jewish calendar has the same thing, and the Arabic calendar, the Islamic calendar has the same thing. I don't know about traditional Chinese calendar. Do you, do you know that? In what sense? Is it, a, is it a cyclical, is it, a, is it tied to season. a historical occurrence? No, it's tied to season. For example, um, in which date we should spread seed to the earth. Yeah, but, we, but, 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 but you do count the, in the traditional historical okay. understanding of Chinese, you do count it's in dynasties. By dynasties, I was going to say, it's by empire. It's made off of my empire. Yeah. I mean, yes. ceramics and things, and statues. Yeah. It's the same, exactly, that's uh, the same thing as, 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 as we would do with the Christian yes, calendar, yes, or yes. we would do with the Jewish calendar. Yes, we have Buddhist calendars, and the Buddhist Buddhist days, calendar. Buddha born, and all yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. 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 And so all these, these, this is what, what Benjamin calls calendar time, mm -hmm. and this calendar time starts with, uh, start with, <coughs> with a, a, a determined occurrence, and then we count, mm -hmm. and then there may be recurrences, it's a set of features in that, but we get, Further away from this, uh, from this event, and because it's so yeah. arbitrary in a way, isn't it? It's not like a yeah. clock, which is yeah. so it's regular. And so it, the day that's right. Clock. And so it points forward in a way to a time after the calendar. Yes. Yeah. It um, uh, in 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 the in the Christian view of time, this becomes very clear. When when uh, Gandhi writes about this in this uh, in this essay, the time that's left and the time that remains, the, the the birth of Christ happens in the middle of time, as it says in the, in the Bible. It's a beautiful phrase, <laughs> in the middle of time. Um, and there is a there is a time before he was born, and there is a time after he was born. And the time after he was born is according to Paul. A time that is left, that remains, that is just we just have to stick it out until <laughs> until the end. Yeah? So everything is changed with that event, and and that yeah. is in different. We can look at that in different configurations, but that is always involved in the idea of the calendar. So you're not thinking of seasons. Seasonal time is really clock time. In a way. Seasonal time is clock. It's clock time. It's a different time, but there's this other time. Yeah. But it's out of time in which we have an absolute count of the days. Yes. But yeah. well, season time often related to the farmer's work, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And that's also in, in Hegel and in the Almanac, it's always about these sorts of things. Yes. But the Almanac is always for the year so much. For the year this, for the year that. So it is a there yeah. is no going back. Whereas with clock time, it is yeah, backwards and forwards is in a way the same. You agree with this talk? I see you so yeah, thinking so much. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was just thinking about messianic stuff. Yeah. And this Kafka, is it? The Messiah comes not on the last day, but on the very last day. Yeah. <coughs> I think it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, clock time or season time is rooted in this other time, which is a different sort of time, isn't it? Yeah. It's a sort of function of it, it is not the time. Yeah. yeah so. That's right. And if um, you were to say, let go, yeah. No, 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 that's all I wanted to say. But yeah. it's kind of interesting. Where is that in Benjamin? It's in, this is in, in, the, the in, in, in the commentary on, on Hegel's story. And what does he call this type of time? Calendar time. Calendar time. Calendar time. Calendar time. Yeah. But it's interesting that he doesn't, I mean, the tendency perhaps to set after he bumps and stuff and to make him enjoy it. I suppose it's like, um, Time precisely moves the capitalism towards mechanization, then it becomes clock time. Yeah. The example is something like people used to say, well, I'll be gone at this minute, 
because things were divided according to actions. Yeah. And then that would change to, I'll be good to it. To it. Yeah, well, exactly. It's yeah. quite crude, but it's yeah. quite interesting that he doesn't tie a clock. Like the clock is the cyclical. It's what you're saying, which seems kind of antithetical to the idea of mechanical capitalist clock time. Yeah, it's okay. kind of like so this false progress or something. But, yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting because I did do some study about, about the clock. Because yeah. Up between 1990s, I mean, when China does not know what the modern clock is, they don't have this time of 24 hours sort of thing, they rely on the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when the modern clock introduced into China, people have to adjust it. Yeah. The whole social system have to adjust it. Yeah, yeah. But there's still something remain, can't fit in. For example, nowadays, we don't make appointments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't like here. Everything no, more tidy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what you said. It's good. That they go every two hours. I just remember when I was in Beijing, they had from the drum chart that you have, you know, throughout the night for various things you do every two. I think it's two hours. Yeah, it's kind of But surely the like the train set time of. Tree. Yes, tree has so, time, but, but more like the, for example, this bus just continue run. They don't have, let's say, 10 o'clock arriving at the station. You know? okay. Just continue to run. <laughs> if you are here, you pick up the bus and continue to go. They have no latitude to try. The Chinese, the, Chinese, so the Chinese can just decree you that Sunday is Tuesday and things like this. They say, well, no, it's not going to be Sunday, it's going to be Tuesday. But in Japan, they still use, for example, Monday is Aris. Tuesday is a fire, you know, they have this symbol there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. According to their calendar, today is Thursday, tomorrow yeah. is Gold Day. Ah, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, the Thursday, today is Water Day. If you look at their television, they have, today is the Wednesday, blah, 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 water. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, to come back to your point, <laughs> yeah, of course, and to make it clear that we understand correctly, um, the, the time of ca the capitalist progress as a kind of energy to cyclical time yeah, is not, um, I don't think, antithetical to, 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 this, to the recurrent clock time mm -hmm. because the time of capitalist progress yes, is a time sense. without an end. Yeah. It, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah? Whereas the calendar time that starts with the commemoration of a that is the commemoration of a particular event and how far we've gone away from it mm. Mm. points beyond itself in a certain mm. in a way. So the clock as cyclical doesn't mean a cosmic cyclical time, but it means a, it means a, a, a measuring of nextness, a pure measuring of nextness. And that is what you might say capitalist history becomes. It becomes so the, the, the new, the capital the modern new in the capitalist view of history becomes simply the next. And when the new becomes the next, and is no longer a new attempt at something that was also attempted before, yeah. then, then, the, yeah. then the next becomes the same. <laughs> so yeah. in capitalist time, you get an emptying out of the idea of the new, and it becomes simply the same thing in, in, a, in a slightly different way or something like that. Empty homogenous time. Empty homogenous <laughs> time of history, and that then ultimately becomes the end of history. Yeah? Whereas in, in the calendar time, which Benjamin talks about it, and, and also Brecht, there is this, and Paul, when he speaks of the time that remains, that is not, that, that is, and that's the very last day, that is a time that is resolved into something other. Yeah. So, are you saying, Johan, that if you have this early time or Christian time, that implies an end to it or being into it? Yeah. Like the Chinese yeah. dynasties, you lose the mandate of heaven, it's more obvious. Exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I see. Yeah, there's an end to it. Well, yes. 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 yes, you can't see an end to it. <laughs> no. No. no, exactly. And this is, that's interesting. That's also, this raises your question about music before we started. Mm -hmm. so, a blog, blog has written an essay, I've used that as a title for this essay on Hegel, about the form of the sonata, um, which is called Aufenthalt in Unerhörten, a sojourn in the unheard of. Mm. So this time that remains 
is, I think that's a beautiful phrase, like the phrase or not. I think the time that remains is a kind of Aufenthalt. It's a, it's a, it's a sojourning mm -hmm. in something unerhört, in something that's not yet there. That, that is something that is different from the time. And he links that to the, to the, to the form of the sonata in, in his essay. But, um, also, the sonata posits that which then happens. Yeah, the, the sonata posits the resolution of the of this uh, mm -hmm. of, 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 of the conflict with which the, the das Unerhörte uh, opens up, as it were. Yeah, but the sonata is a is a is a form in which um, it, it, it you know reaches, as it were, and so it opens up the space in which this can be this das Unerhörte in which it can be experienced. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so it's not to say that life, that, that history is like a piece of music and when it comes to the end, then... then, then, then <laughs> that's the whole Yeah, no, that, 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 But it becomes, it, it opens up in, 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 in the form. Um, so, so, and <coughs> I think there is a... In the story of Empedocles, in, in, in the death of Empedocles, we also get... Um, this, this, uh, this thing about time. Mm -hmm. Yes. The time that leads up to the to, to the to the the killing, and the time after it. And the time after it is the time from which the first poem is written. That is, and it, it, it's happened. Yeah. He has died, and that, that something can be said. And um, the same applies to Lao Tse. The, the presence of the Tao Te Ching is, is there after he has been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right? So, uh, I can't, I can't... So that's kind of the title. I don't, yeah, I don't want to suggest that it's one on one the same no, thing. No. But I want to, I want to raise your sensitivity for the fact that we're talking, when we're talking about the situation in which Lao Tse has written his book and disappeared, that is a different time than the time before it. Yeah. And the same thing with Empedocles, before he jumps into the crater and after he's jumped into the crater. So these occurrences are not simply events after which maybe some other dude jumps in the crater yeah. or you know uh, somebody else writes a book <laughs> it, it's uh, and then <laughs> even the, this to what you were saying last time it's a, a mediated type of thing isn't it vanishing mediated it's yes it's exactly. mediated time yeah it's 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 time that becomes accessible via somebody yeah. vanishing yeah. yeah via the vanishing act yeah uh, and that's also in music that's that's also why the the the, the das Aufenthalt im Unerhörten also relies on a on a on, a, on an evacuation. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Let's read this poem. Yeah. It's also in translation in the handout. If you uh, still have that. Wir kennen von der Entstehung des Buches Tao Te Ching auf dem Weg des Lao Tse in die Imitation. Als er 70 war und war gebrecht, drängte es den Lehrer doch nach Ruhe, denn die Güte war im Lande wieder einmal schwächlich und die Bosheit nahm an Kräften wieder einmal zu und ergötzte den Schuh. Und er packte ein, was er so brauchte, weh, doch es wurde dies und das. So die Pfeife, die er immer abends rauchte, und das Büchlein, das er immer las, Weißbrot, Weißbrot nach dem Augenmaß. Freute sich der Stars noch einmal und vergaß es, als er ins Gebirg den Weg einschlug. Und sein Ochse freute sich des frischen Grases, kauend, während er den Alten trug, denn dem ging es schnell genug. Doch am vierten Tag im Felsgesteine hat ein Zöllner ihm den Weg verwehrt. Kostbarkeiten zu verzollen? Keine. 
Und der Knabe, der den Ochsen führte, sprach, er hat gelehrt. Und so war auch das erklärt. Doch der Mann, in einer heißen Regen, fragte noch, hat er was rausgekriegt? Sprach der Knabe, dass das weiche Wasser in Bewegung mit der Zeit die mächtigen Steine besiegt. Du verstehst, was Harte unterliegt. Dass er nicht das letzte Tageslicht verlöre, trieb der Knabe nun den Ochsen an. Und die drei verschwanden schon um eine schwarze Föhre, da kam plötzlich Fahrt in unser Mann und er schrie, hey du, halt an! Was ist das mit diesem Wasser, Alter? Hielt der Alte, interessiert es dich? Sprach der Mann, ich bin nur Zollverwandter, doch wer wen besiegt, das interessiert auch mich. Wenn du es weißt, dann sprich. Schreib mir's auf, diktier es diesem Kinde. So was nimmt man doch nicht mit sich fort. Da gibt's doch Papier bei uns und Tinte. Und ein Nachbar gibt es auch. Ich wohne dort. Nun, ist das ein Wort? Über seine Schulter sah der Alter auf den Mann. Trickjoppe, keine Schuhe, und die Sterne eine einzige Falte. Ach, kein Sieger trat er auf ihn zu. Und er murmelte, auch du. Eine höfliche Bitte abzuschlagen, war der Alte geschieden zu alt. Denn er sagte laut, die etwas fragen, die verdienen Antwort, sprach der Knabe, es wird auch schon kalt. Gut, ein kleiner Aufenthalt. Und von seinem Ochsen stieg der Weise, sieben Tage schrieben sie zu zweit. Und der Zörner brachte Essen, und der fluchte nur noch leise mit dem Schmuggel in der ganzen Zeit. Und dann war es soweit. Und dem Zörner händigte den Knabe eines Morgens 81 Sprüche ein. Und mit Dank für eine kleine Reisegabe bogen sie in jene Führer ins Gestein. Sag jetzt, kann man höflicher sein. Aber rühmen wir nicht nur den Weisen, dass der Name auf dem Buch prangt. Denn man muss den Weisen seine Weisheit erst entreißen. Darum sei der Zörner auch bedankt. Er hat sie ihm abverlangt. Okay. The one line that I wrote it out, I just like it. So I didn't know where I wrote it out. No, I think we've got a slightly different version. Oh, you've got a slightly different version. So I wrote it out. Well, yeah. Well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, well, uh, well, next week, well, next week, he said, I mean. Could be where? Um, Meshti, was it? Yeah, it was Meshti we had. Yeah. You see, yeah. change this is a misprint. Is it Dejshu? Yeah. Is it Dejshu? Yeah. Is it Dejshu? Yeah. But maybe change it to singular Shu because it was Dejshu in this, and you said Dejshu. Ah, what was that? Goethe, uh, 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 Goethe, 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 this is 53, so it could be that this is the that he changed these words in the in the edition for the oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so he, he put them together, the Kanenda Kashikin. He really yeah, separate. He wrote this before the war, I, I know that. Right. And then he put the But he put several things together in the Kalenda Kashikin. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. I've put, a, I've put a, an edition of the Kalenda Kashikin on the website. Uh, but this is interesting to find out. Well, if there are any differences there, that must be quite easy to find out. Somebody can do that. <laughs> it feels so cold. cold. Software. Yeah. Um, okay, so, what do you think of it? Let's make an inventory of uh, impressions about this poem. I think the meter, I mean, I'm very dull, so I'm sort of familiar with those sort of four lines, and then that 
single line at the end, it strikes me as very odd. So exactly, yeah. Uh, so it just sort of metrically, or yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's a deliberate uh, violation. Of, of deliberate violation, absolutely. Yeah. And it's a bit discomforting, actually. Yeah, isn't it? Exactly. It's discomforting. Like many of the stories in the calendar Geschichten. Yes. It has this kind of, yeah, Arbeiter. Keeps you awake. Keeps you awake, yeah. Arbeiter of you. Uh, and, yeah, uh, that's right. <coughs> it's a kind of deliberate, uh, deliberate bluntness about it. Yes. Yeah. Which of course it is, but it goes for almost everything at Brecht, as we know, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, but you see that here too in the way the meter is, uh, is deliberately, your expectations are thwarted right from the start, and so it's the last line. But is that just because um, it's four lines of pentameter and then tetrameter? Yeah. Because so it's like you miss the last step or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you're waiting for that last bit to make it into a But in a way, it's so. Um, Consistently applied in every single. Yeah, they get used to it after a bit. I agree. Uh, you fall but, into it. So I, I mean, I, I didn't have. I mean, it has an effect, but I don't think it was particularly jarring I, um, for me. I, um, but I think that last line has a quality to it, which yeah. is, and I think the way he uses the formal device is telling that it's usually some banal detail. Yeah, yeah, that's like it's not an important stress or something vital to it. Exactly. Right. Then it's my section. You know, this is outside board. Hey, do hold on. Yeah, do hold on. But if you know, tell us. Yeah. And also in five, you first case, that's hard to delete. Yeah. As if that is so obvious. Yeah. Uh, hardness must lose the day. Um, it's a boring one. It's very simple language. It's quite breaking in. Yeah. It's on. Uh, interesting comment. It's well, it's a very interesting comment because the language in the in, in the, certainly in the language of the Tao Te Ching. Yes, absolutely. That's what I was saying. It's the unhewn rock. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, I think that's very, very telling. Um, also, the shoe. Eh? It could have hmm. been shoe. So here we have yeah, some industrial yeah. samples. Yeah. It's not quite often the shoe, the shoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> stress on shoes. <laughs> It's got buckles. Big significant difference. Yeah, I know it's under the 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 uh, the doesn't have shoes. Uh, and actually, words like the beauty of both sides is that meant to be his love and strife, do you think, or not? Yeah. Um, there we go. Well. In just the first verse, actually, the first verse. The both had on Catherine Lang Yeah, so we. Correct. Of course. Let's just try. Yeah. But I never know he, he smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a smoke, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a smoke in the tradition. Is that, uh, is that or is that. No, I never heard that he is smoking. No, he is smoking. And you read a book at night. It's interesting which book found, I suppose, like like his devotions in the photos in the Yeah. And actually, he's a librarian. He's a visual librarian. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. He, he was a librarian, yeah. Yeah, I read in this, in the, well, I read about it also that he, that he didn't have any students. Right. And one of the problems was that he, that, he, uh, that he tried to get students, but people, so the story, that he tried to get students, People who become a student. That, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Kant, another confusing another another feature of confusing Kant. He in, he attracted a lot of students. Yeah, and I think it made a confusion Kant. He attracted a lot of students. So once can, um, um, Kant come to the labs to ask a question, what is how the thing, and uh, actually labs blame him, saying what the way he doing thing is hypocritical. Yeah, 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 that's right, I read that, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. And then he left. <laughs> then he left. Maybe the way he, he doing things cannot attract so many people <coughs> because the way he doing things cannot earn undermining reputation in society. 
Yeah. This is reason till now students taught in schools they more prefer the Confucian rather than Taoism. Taoism doesn't lead to anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything solid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't do anything with it. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And that um, that feeds into the image of, of Lao Tse as this kind of proto-anarchist in a way, yeah? which was which became certainly in the, in the reception in the West, in the West became very prominent after, but also already at this time, I think. There was already this feeling. Which is quite an interesting contrast with the Hohenlin that, you know, the Hohenlin version has students where he just has this cloud, although, you know, he's obviously sort of helpful, but not much more than that, I think, in writing things out. Although it does sort of support um, that, so. And also, I think Lao's way of doing things fit in his own philosophy because he thinks the big words do not need to say. To get the, the big words or the, yeah, the yes. magic words do not need to say. Yeah. So I think his own way of doing things fit into his own philosophy as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes, the whole the whole uh, the story is uh, is an example is, a, is, a, yes. is exemplifies the philosophy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you said that last time that uh, the master doesn't really have to say anything. No, actually, in fact, doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything. That. <laughs> no, that's how you learn. Yeah, so think so how, says. how different is that from a seminar setting that we normally have? <laughs> <laughs> well, we should all just sit in silence for it. It's, it's, yeah. As you were saying earlier, what's not said is the important thing. There's a phrase about it. They say, if you want to be the knowledge, you learn, but if you want to be the Tao, the Tao you have distance with knowledge. Yeah, so exactly. he writes the same thing, he says, if you want to get knowledge, accumulate every day. Yeah. But if you want to get to the dark, minus. We have less every day. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. less every day. Is there a difference in style between Confucius and Tao? In style, the, the language? So language. Which is, is, it more, is, it, is there a simplicity? Yes, in Tao, the thing is, it's very abstract yeah. and it's fluid, but in in Confucian, the, the, the book um, comes right about it. Um, but it's different. When you read when the Laos, you, you, it's linked to you some mental physics level, <laughs> but if you read the Confucian, it's very, for example, you talk about if your friend come to visit you, feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's easier to understand yes, the analects than the dodging, it's much easier. Um, language or not. But the, the, the king sometimes like to tell the gene because if you can decode tell the gene, you can rule a country. It's like that. Yes. Yeah. It's a very high level of wisdom and maybe government or governance from a distance in a way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly from a distance again. Mm. So I link this in the, in the last blog post to this idea of the impossible professions. Yes. Freud talks about uh, analysis of the impossible profession together with teaching and governing. Mm -hmm. and, and he says they are impossible because you are confronting, yeah. and healing as well, so medicine in general, you're confronting, your, 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 you're constantly hitting on the narcissism of the ones that you are trying to help. <laughs> so <laughs> the analyst has to, has to address the narcissism in the analyst end. And so the, in the teaching relationship, uh, it's the expectations of the student of what they will learn and not learn, what they should learn, that you have to start to break down. They don't want you to break it down. And the same with, with, with government. So he sees it as the problem of the impossible professions is the problem of narcissism. But you could also see the, the problem of the, the impossible professions as the fact that, that the professional, the analyst, or the healer, or the teacher, or the, 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 the governor, is the one who withdraws and who lets the patient has to heal him or herself. The student has to learn themselves. The the country has to, the city has to prove itself. Um, so at the moment you pride yourself as a teacher or as an analyst or as a, as a <coughs> yes. you are the expert, you are the yeah. authority, you will do it, then you lose it. Now here is and so you have to also vanish as a mediator yourself. The teacher is a vanishing mediator. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't teach. 
just as the analyst is a vanishing media to us about that. Well, I, I read, I can't actually remember if you made this point explicitly in that post, which was really, really interesting, but I read all of that as sort of this classic Marxian idea of overcoming alienation. Yeah. So these are professions in the sense of they're like public figures or whatever who facilitate something and, um, and uh, but, but you have to, but as a pupil or um, an animal fan or whatever, you have to overcome um, the, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the appropriation of your powers and things like that. Yeah. And that's why they vanish as mediators, because yeah. you reappropriate those things. Exactly, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So it's not really about the vanishing mediator, it's about, it's about the one who, who, who yeah, who transcends it. Yeah, no, that's right. So who, who finds that something that you have put outside of yourself, yeah. the teacher has to tell me, the analyst has to heal me, the governor has to govern me, you claim that back. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, we not see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's what you get with the wife here with Lao Tse. That was the idea with Lao Tse. That you would say, it's there, it's the same thing. He is, <coughs> so he leaves because the country, both high and now you are in Mansu, it was going, so what did he, 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 he went away, not maybe only just because he just was fed up with it, but also to allow that process to happen. And, and, and also, back and to your question about, you, you say if he has students or not, he quit sense about Sarge. Yes, he said, Sarge is saying to the sea. Equal with sergeant of S A T E. Safe. 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 I was just going to say, about 17, I think it's quite good, and the master doesn't talk, he acts. When his work is done, and people say, amazing, we did it all by ourselves. <laughs> 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 it really be considered to do. So he acts by just walking away. And then he acts by walking away. And that solves so things, and the people do it. Yeah. It's amazing. He left us his book, and, and that, and we see that in the, in already, we begin to see it in the, in the story of the poem, where um, it is, the, uh, it's the, 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 the Tselna, the customs person, who is invited to do what he, what he did, by the act of the, of, of, of the, isn't there a Kleist story, something of a man telling a custom with a horse? Mm -hmm. I have to look it up and see yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, the logical consequence of that is that Lao Tzu need not have left the Dao Te Ching. He could say that Tzu hadn't asked him to write anything down. He could have left and things would have been all right without the Dao Te Ching. I don't know. Yeah. That's always the, the emotion of the story is, oh my God, what if that guy yeah, <laughs> but maybe not. It's not the thing about you is you can work it out for yourself. I don't think really see the logic of that. <laughs> yes, actually, this officer has the same surname with me. Really? Yes. Does he have a name? Yes, the officer called In Shi. Uh, in this surname in Chinese means officer. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. You're right. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Note also that the that Lao Tse is only called the advisor the moment he gets down from his ox. Okay. So before that, it's the alter, uh, the lehrer. <coughs> Etc. And it's 
uh, it's the visor only when he when he comes down from his ox and he tries and he and he, and he starts to write 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 it down. Yeah, exactly. He's got nothing nothing uh, <laughs> nothing that's worth anything to uh, to declare. It's like uh, it's like uh, like Oscar Wilde's love, yeah. nothing to declare but my genius. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of is probably also in 
Ja, das bleibt mir wie gesagt auch sehen, das heißt dann, so ist das der Knabe. I imagine that just now it's a bit maybe it could be some because that's where it's but I'm very in day day. That sounds like it's a bit sad session. Yeah, me too. And maybe that's not a kind of a sort of bigger shame, but just that's maybe that's mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we have a canal to thank her. To thank her so
um, stored developed during that period. Yeah. Most of original Chinese philosophy are born in that yeah. period. After that, they just continue to develop the school of thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And yeah, that's true. Yeah, so if someone else no value to decline. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you think the do you think the customs man is is meaning in a Hachagas Rasa Krit? He's not meaning in the sense of possessions or anything physical. He actually means some, you know, did he? Yeah, did what he, did he get out of it for his yes. learning, for his teaching? Or, yeah, did, did, did he find anything? Did he find anything? Yes. Yeah. How did he make out? <laughs> well, was, but, yeah, how did he make out? Pray. <laughs> <laughs> So that the rhyming comes first in this <laughs> And height and angle can be understood in different ways. It can, it can be understood, I think, to imply a kind of irony. So, like an ironical question, oh right, did he, did he find out something? Probably not, you know. Uh, or, or it can mean that he actually got excited. Yeah, Heitner Leben can also mean, you know, he, he was, he was, he was excited. He said, okay, well, did he find out something? That's right, that's a heightened. Yeah, heightened, uh, heightened yeah. state of excitation. Um, and so, in that respect, maybe it's not a coincidence that the Knabe appears here for the first time, that as you already said, uh, it's the, the, it all runs via the, the Knabe, who is in his own way a vanishing medium. <laughs> 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 uh, um, so there is a kind of, you know, I think there is a sort of traditional way of looking at Lao Tse on his, on his, his uh, oxen, as a, or his ox, as a, as a metaphor for the soul. So the soul and the body, is the, is the, the, the relation is that of the ox and the, and, and the sage on, on, on top of it. Um, so it's almost like a mimic, a, a, a reminding us of the, of the platonic myth of the soul of the charioteer with the, with the two horses. And actually, the, the box has a color. It's green. Ah, it's a color. It's a green one. Green or gray? Green. Green. Gray. Green. G-R-E-E-N. Right. Green. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. It's just because there's phrases that don't mean just uh, lots of rising is green. <laughs> Box. <laughs> Real. Disappear. Yeah. Mm. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, well, let's we'll find out. Yeah, find out what that has a symbolic meaning. I think it's coming back to connect that canal, it's quite canny, because it, it's quite a good, if you were to summarize Lasser's thought, it's not bad if you were to summarize it in 10 or 12 words or something. It's not a bad way to do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not stupid. It's <laughs> Of, uh, of, of people in his own life, as well as a sort of servant or shepherd or something. He did arrive, didn't he? Because he, 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 he dictated to the place, right? So he's, yeah. he's, he must be able to write. He's not a yeah. yeah. yes. yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He, he must be able to write. Yeah. Maybe he's another people. Um, And he, as you say, he, he, he summarizes it very, very uh, succinctly because also emphasizes that it is a simple message that, yeah, that nevertheless, uh, nevertheless puts everything on its head. That's why I have the label with the title of Matthew Stein Musik. Du verstehst, was hart und unterliegt. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Um, that is uh, again almost majestic, but but um, you know at the beginning. That hard on what customs are <laughs> so <laughs> understandable. Mm. Is that meant to be a, a sort of um, a metonym for what's going on with the customs officials that they have to penetrate this this opposition of <laughs> Yeah, pass through the harvest, the harvest. Yeah. And yes. light like water and flow through. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. it's a sort of barrier, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's very, very true. That's very true. Um, the, the customs official is the limit, is the border, the grenze. Yeah, the boundary. And that has to be broken. Yeah. And it's, and it's the boundary of the state, but it's also the boundary, is the boundary in, the, in the soul. It's in any kind of boundary. It's also the boundary of the separated individual. Because Tao is a metaphor for wow, water, is, is a metaphor for, 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 for the Tao itself. <coughs> it's very important. It's an important metaphor. Yeah, and also, mm -hmm. it's a weak bit. Because yeah. water represents a weak bit. He often uses the metaphor of the water with a stone. He said, it looks like water is soft, it's weak, but not. Water runs past a stone, it shapes the stone, it changes the stone. So yeah. soft bit can change the most strong bit. Yeah. This is what exactly. Yeah, it's very interesting that you write on them off, not towards the front, actually backwards. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. For example, this is ox. Yeah. <laughs> Resurrection. Yeah. You don't write in this way. In mm -hmm. backwards. <laughs> is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it gets ever more interesting. <laughs> so he's looking. He's looking. In the other direction yes. from where he's going. Yeah, this is towards the Lepikosta, this is the country he lived. Yeah. And he ran out of great box. Yeah. He's often portrayed on jades, isn't he? And jades, really, crystals or solids. Yeah, why is that for us? Yeah, I've never noticed how he's writing. That's amazing, yeah. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> because then this whole image becomes a genius faced image, isn't it? Mm. It's moving into the future, but looking back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And this, this, uh, I think we need to really keep track, uh, hold on to that idea that we have to, we have, uh, I mean, that's that figure of emigration, of exile, is a figure of transcendence. Mm -hmm. It's a figure of breaking through something. Just as Empedocles tries to break through the separateness of his individual identity mm -hmm. and to become one with the all. So we get uh, that here uh, with this what happens here in, in this scene, in which it is the one who protects the border, who uh, uh, he is he is the instrument, the instrument of, of, of transgression. Yeah? As Bloch says that uh, to think means to transgress. Yeah? So that is what happens here. Yeah? I think it's very good. Yeah. And so it is a mess in You know, in the sense that this is part of, you know, presumably this, this will be part of his, uh, of the, the Tao Te Ching, which will, <coughs> precisely, which will allow them to get through. So it's, um, so I, that, that's that's the sense in which I'm in it. Yeah. That it's, it's part of um, uh, this operator. Yeah. Um, what is yeah. So the, where the part represents the whole. Oh right, I see. Or the whole part. Right. Okay. Um, so it's so it's like it's like I mean if I understood it right, yeah. uh, he's he's quoting what will be a part of the book he writes. Yes. So. And so that's meant to stand for the whole book, which will really itself yeah. let them pass through. Yeah, which will let them pass, that's right, which will let them pass through, yeah, and which will have, well, which, was, which will in effect have removed the boundary. Not, no, not just for them probably, but also for those who they leave behind maybe. Because now the state has been given that book. Mm. So I mean, yeah, so I see what you mean. I mean, they, <laughs> they get out because they write that book. <laughs> yeah, is that? Well, I, I mean, that's that's what what happens. I think. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. yeah, but in a wider sense, yeah. the people for whom the book is written also can get out of their situation because they have the book. Or, As in the the customs. Of the customs official of the country, or we yeah, have okay. this book. We can now. Because we have this book, yeah, we can we can get out of our our own boundary 
separated existence and we can come to um, know the all pervasive cloud. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. Although uh, sort of at the level of the the poem, I, uh, I, I mean I think the the, the term though is is supposed to, to he's you know, not going to give up his job just because he's read this. No, 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 no. That's right, but mid that side. Yeah. But I, but I think Mitte, if you yeah. take Lao Tse as kind of proto Marx, <laughs> then with that side, the boundaries, the, the, the borders will disappear. Because Kospakite to the Solon, that doesn't happen in, uh, oh, that's true. in communism. Too, communism. And I think you're probably right that it is on well, two levels at least. Maybe Ras could think, as they said, so of. Also, getting out, you know, this, you know, from existence separateness as well as, yeah, you know, the several levels of the last Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The country, pointless life, or yeah. So it is a, and that's precisely uh, so at the more at the most abstract level. I think that is that. That's what I what I. I'm trying to get it with this idea of exile and immigration. It is this moving over, crossing a boundary, transgressing, that makes something possible. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and that you see that in in, this, in the plot of the of the play of, of the, the poem, as it were, and the way you explained it, and maybe also in, in the in, in the philosophical meaning of it, and and in a different way in the Pentecost, because there it is the fire that he jumps in. This might be understood as opening the way for the water to be let in. Yeah. And so we have a we have empathically the fire thinker, Lao uh, Tzu the water thinker. Yeah. And also, what are the open levels in in female? Yeah, that's right. It, it, that's a. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and uh, that's something that actually was pointed out by a lot of the, by the real elements, that this is a, that the, the, the Tao Te Ching is a, uh, what they believe they had sort of this idea of periodization, prehistory, that there was this phase of, uh, of early history, of Mutterrecht, maternal, a matriarchal society, preceding the patriarchal society, and they placed this idea of Tao as a, they called it a matriarchal idea. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, and I think is definitely patriarchal idea. Yeah. So that's a theme that we need to explore. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. you've got um, you've got stone and mountain, which are very sort of Chinese ideas. I was going to say fur, this is a German idea, but that's you know that's Chinese as well. You mean mountain? Mountain, well, all the landscapes yes. and the symbolic things of the mountain yes. as family and stone being hard and trees again symbolizing whether it's a fur or whatever. Yes, and, you know. and to worship the mountain. Yes, yes. yeah. Mountain and water, very important one. When I write that city, of course, so yeah. they try to build the mountain water city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and bread, you know. There's a lot about stones and that, and mountains, and, and that mixture in the well. I think it's, it's yeah. embedded in, in our DNA or something, which for me, I, I often escape to the mountain for myself. Because I know when, when I talk about British, to British, they say, uh, I like to go to the mountain. When they think about the mountain, it's forest, natural, right? Yeah. But for, for me, it's that the mountain is connected to something different. That's right. And so maybe spirit or something inside me. <laughs> it's a kind of cultural thing. It's well, the mountain. Chinese the landscape is mountain and water, isn't it? I mean, you can you can look at your painting. Sound you can yeah. continue painting mountain and water. Yeah, it's mountain and water. It's landscape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's in German. In German culture, in German it's the forest. It's the forest. The forest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the forest. The forest. It's the forest. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's um, but uh, and, and of course that's right. I mean. And then he jumps into the crater and he disappears into the into the mountain. Into the mountain, yeah. yeah. Um, so 
There is a re oh yeah, I wanted to point out that, that final point I'm stopping. There is a reflexive element uh, with this metonymic character of this phrase. This poem is about the condition, also about the conditions under which this book can arise. Mm. So it points to the mediation by a text of a reality. Tao itself, maybe we can say, has no form. Has no form, but Tao itself must be named for it to be accessible as what cannot be named. But it must be named for it to be accessible as what cannot be named. It needs language, it needs, it needs us, just as it Hegel's phenomenal spirit, we are necessary for absolute spirit to come to itself, because we know it. <laughs> And nobody else does, and um, and so the Tao. You could, uh, this is a speculative interpretation. You could say the Tao needs the Tao Te Ching, just as the Tao Te Ching speaks of the Tao. Uh, so that book, that text, if you want to go very far, is more than just a book. These the, the characters live. The characters are the Tao itself in a very speculative way, in which you might say, yeah, also in, in, in Kabbalistic views of the Torah, you get the same idea, the Torah actually is alive. It's not just a book or a text, it is alive, and it captures the, as the Kabbalistic mystics say, the life of every individual in Israel is in the Torah, as what it is. Um, yeah, the identity. Uh, so the the book itself is necessary for the thing for God to exist. The Torah is necessary for the sorry the Tao Te Ching is necessary for the Tao to be what it is as as the unnameable. Yeah, to be what it is. I mean, I was thinking it, it, it's only there to just be named to show that it cannot be named. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not that. Uh, <laughs> it's part of the completion of, of the Tao itself. Yes. So if you, yes. if you were real, real Taoist, if you were Taoist mystics, you might say that the fact that he wrote it down, <laughs> that doesn't mean that it didn't exist before. No, 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 no. It was already there. Yeah. Um, and the same goes in a, in a different way. You can see that in the way Empedocles Hulden treats the, the matter of Empedocles' death. Because he always draws back from a final symp sympathetic identification with this act. He says, no, no, I'm telling you about it. Yes. And that completes the process. Yeah. Okay, here we stop.